Um, the workshop today is focused on basic neurological examination. Uh, don't get distracted by word basic. It will be quite difficult. We will go into some depths and details. But the reason we call it basic is that we have a, a advanced neuro examination workshop separately which will deal with the subspeciality focused exam that we don't routinely do. So this exam is what you would routinely do on most patients and use those tools and tips regardless of what kind of neurological problem they have. But specialty <coughs> focus, so for example, movement disorder exam cannot be covered in a basic neurological examination. And how do you examine tremor, how do you examine gait is far more complex and advanced. So we have a different um, simulation based workshop for that. So that will be August 9th and it will be based on groups and stations that you will go through and get trained and there will be some test at that time. But today is to get you brushed up on the basics of neurological examination. But before I do that, um, I had some thoughts. So I have a question for you guys. If you get hired into a basketball team, What's the first thing that you need to learn? How to play basketball. <laughs> no. The rules of basketball. No. Who your teammates are? No. It depends on what position I'm going to. No. How to put your socks on. <laughs> so you have to start with how to get ready or prepared to do anything. And I don't say that. It's said by John Wooden, the most famous basketball coach uh, for LA, UCLA. So here's the socks, or how to put socks on for the residents. Here are some things that you should be keeping in your mind. The most important thing to have in your pocket for the rounds. Hammers? No. Patient list? You know, it's going to be something on left field. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be what you think it is. It will be a chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> Do not let your patients and their families get turned off by your bad breath. Okay? So you should never be called out for bad breath, bad smell, bad shirt, tie, or a dirty white coat. It's a sin. Everything else is forgiven, but these things will haunt you. But you know what it does tell you? That their olfaction works. <laughs> right? I mean, right. But that's not the best olfactory no, no, no. test there is. So here's a list of things uh, that I wrote down that you should carry. Uh, gum or mouth freshener. A deodorant or perfume in your locker. Okay? And I have one. I always had one as a resident. Extra white coat, extra tie, and extra shirt. Okay? Or things comparable to that. A shoe shiner. Okay, don't have vomit or blood show up on your shoe all the day or for, for the rest of the day. Tylenol, okay, for those days. Bandage, okay, and an article, a review article, freshly one that you have not read, should always be in your pocket. Don't waste those minutes when your faculty is distracted by talking to someone, answering the page, and you don't have an order to play, so you don't have a note to finish. If you don't have anything else to do, then you should not be chit-chatting. You should pick up that article from your pocket and start finishing it. Half of your learning will happen with those articles during those rounds. Okay? I went through 275 articles during my residency, during my three years, and just doing that, keeping one in my pocket. So I always had one printed in my pocket all the time during the rounds, and I'll just pick it out and start reading through it. So these are the important things to carry in your one in your pocket. The books that you should finish in your first year or the first. The Myers Clinical Examination, okay, one of the best book written on clinical examination, finish the whole 350 pages of it. Blumenfield Anatomy through clinical cases, and then or you could use Continuum, and you can print Continuum articles to carry with you. Continuum, these are the basics one. If you want a complete list of the books, then you can visit my office or go to Dr. Kedar, but you need a really complete list of books then go to Dr. Bertoni's office or Dr. Torres' office and you'll see walls of book, okay? I will, towards the end of the day, also share the list of iPhone apps that I carry on my phone that I think are useful and helpful. And you know, you can start there and then collect the ones you do. 
tools are supposed to make your job easier and that's what you should look for that should your goal be find the tool that will get your job done okay all right, so we will start the day with a talk by Dr. Bertoni on a five-minute neurological examination, the basic routine one. We will add layers of depth to it, what the abnormalities look like. But the first and most important goal today is to make sure that your technique of doing each individual step of neurological exam is perfect. You as a neurology resident cannot do a <coughs> reflexes wrong, okay, that's criminal. Other, we'll have to hear about it from other services. So you have to do everything just right. If nobody else can do it, you should still be able to do it. Okay, that's true for everything in neurology, including lumbar puncture. Even if the radiology fails, you should still be able to get it. That's how good you need to be as a neurologist. Very good, and then I brought my residency back. I don't use it anymore, but it's still sitting with all the tools I thought were useful in the rounds and collected. I'll walk you through it at the end of the day after the lectures and share with you the complete comprehensive list of what I used as a resident. This is closed since I became fellow. I haven't used it much. I don't even really use a hammer anymore as a movement disorder neurologist, you know, except for rare occasions I have to teach residents just to punish them. <laughs> and so we will be reviewing that and then we'll be continue to practice a little bit more. So let's start with the neuro examination. Okay, you've inspired me, Danish. Okay, I got some other Danishisms I wanna yeah, I'll come to the middle. So, first of all, um, as long as we're talking about general things, uh, we're talking about particulars. John Wooden says, here's how you put on your sweat socks. So there's no wrinkles, so there's no problems that you're going to get later. And you know, if you do not um, prepare um, to succeed, then you're preparing to fail. So you have to, and I, I take some of the things Don has just told you, it's the moment that you're in right now. Whether you're outside an elevator and you have that review article, you can use that moment. You can, don't let anything be wasted. Be yourself, everybody else is taken. You gotta be honest to yourself and you gotta do the best thing. Find a way to get the work done. Sometimes you got to go sort of in a roundabout way, but you guys are creative. You got here because of hard work and skill and talent, and um, keep on learning things. The best way to learn is actually to teach. If you read something and you say, what are the take-home messages if I were to tell my fellow residents, what would I tell them? And you say, here are the four main points. You've just taught yourself in the process of thinking how you would teach it. Um, it's the best way to learn and always find the better way. You may know how to do reflexes. If something we say here or Danish has or one of you guys knows another way of doing things, um, you'll find out that things like the coma exam is a piece of cake if you know what, what to do. If you know how to do a nasal tickle response or corneal response, there's only about two cranial nerves you can't do. Uh, one of them is one, unless you have a really offensive odor, and they make a face when you come by. And the other one is maybe 11, but there are ways of getting 11 to move too if you know how to do it. So you have to, it's like when you're playing baseball or any game, you gotta know the rules, you gotta touch all four bases to score a home run, to score a run in baseball. So this is how you touch all the bases. There's more than one way. 